Welcome to the Lodge. You've accessed the LodgeCast experience. Warning, warning. Dangerous spoilers ahead. Enjoy. Welcome to a coked up edition of Hot Takes. I'm your Lodge Master. With me as always is motherfucking Brother Bishki. This is cocaine speaking. I can make you do anything. <laughs> and with, and in, uh, what the fuck do I say? You what go, do I say about Lucas, Lucas, Lucas usually? He is always his Brother Bishki. <laughs> brother Lucas yeah, in the back. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> fuck, I... It's like a week no, goes by. Yeah, don't okay. don't oh, cut yeah. any of this. Yeah. Shit. And in the back, we got Brother LT. Cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. How are you, cocaine? And answering the call of the wild for this fucking movie tonight, we have Brother Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and Lodge Mistress Milster. Roar! Whoa, whoa. We just did it. We climbed the mountain. I mean, this is one of those movies where it's a foregone conclusion. It's like it comes with the territory of doing a fucking podcast like this. Yes. You have to do Cocaine Bear. A movie comes out called Cocaine Bear. What are we going to do? Not cover it? Yeah. And Bishki, you were not happy going in. You were like no, me just, going into missing. Yeah, it felt like a viral marketing campaign. Yes. <laughs> like, that was successful. <laughs> like the poster for sure. The trailer didn't really get me. And then I saw some, I saw some ratings of some letterbox folk. <laughs> <laughs> and th th those are big spoilers these days. And, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's, I was like, "Ooh, it's yeah. tough to avoid when the tide starts turning on something." But I have stayed completely pure. I didn't know anything going in. I just knew the excitement was building, and that was it. Did you guys all know what we were getting into? You were pure and uncut, Com straight from <laughs> Colombia, completely not stepped on at all. Not stepped on. Did you guys do any research on this before we went in? Or did the you only guys... research I had was the sweet Lodge Papa saying that we had to go see Cocaine Bear. That's he seemed true. very pumped about it. My that dad, was the only spoiler I had. My dad saw it opening night, of course. Yeah. My only research was re-listening to our August two, 2019 episode of Crawl. Crawl. Where uh, Lodge Master <laughs> and I did a live rewrite together. Yes. co-wrote like a meth gator. But we actually did say also a gator that ate cocaine, but it was like from ah. a gator farm. Oh, I still with, think about that rewrite With like the sometimes. mega mom gator, like different levels of gator. Different levels. That was the fucking point. Different levels and, of gators. And then I was like, I wonder when Cocaine Bear was announced, which was March of 2021. So we oh. kind of put, we planted the seeds yeah, into the collective we unconscious. We did. Yeah. Justin, did you know anything going in? The only thing I knew is that in the actual story, which it's based on a true story right. where a drug plane ejects bags of cocaine, a bear eats one, and but in real life, the bear just OD'd and died. Aww. Yeah, that's what I which was is waiting super to sad. <laughs> So I'm really happy that the fictionalized account was much more <laughs> fun than license. the real story. All right, well, before we rip into these bags of cocaina. <laughs> How do you get the protein as quick as possible into the bloodstream? A little schnapps. Inspired by the 1985, oh, this is from Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Inspired by the 1985 true story of a drug runner's plane crash, missing cocaine, and the black bear that ate it, this wild thriller finds an oddball group of cops, criminals, Wait, does it call itself a thriller? Is it, does that just happen? It's a wild thriller. <laughs> wild. <laughs> Finds an oddball group of cops, criminals, tourists, and teens converging in a Georgia forest where a 500-pound apex predator has ingested a staggering amount of cocaine and gone on a coke-fueled rampage for more blow, period, period, <laughs> period, and blood, period. Period. <laughs> Lots of blood. I mean, this is one of those things where it would be a joke like that we'd make back in 2015 or something. It's like the year is 2023. We all come staggering out of cocaine bear. 
her. Yeah. And none of us are smiling. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Like, this is... Bishki, you... I think you nailed it. It's an ad campaign in search of a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the title is writing a check. The movie can't cash. I don't know if this movie could cash. Well, no, I I think what I didn't realize until we were in the theater tonight seeing it when they were showing us the real life archival footage from the actual case, I was like, oh, oh, darn. They're going to like lean into this as a plot or something. And it was like the absolute kiss of death. What, the archival of Tom Brokaw talking about it? No, the drug plot. The whole oh. drug, like, like <laughs> the, the, whole, the whole, part the whole of movie. Cocaine bear? Yeah, I was like, this is more like like cocaine guys than cocaine bear. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Like, how, yeah. how do you get me here with this title? And then you keep me sitting here for like 40 minutes. I'm looking at my watch 40 minutes in because there's like six different stories. It's so poorly cross-cutting oh, the script is a it's, damn wolf there, there is no script <laughs> like it's, it's it yeah. feels like they lost it in the edit or they had to salvage it in the edit or something there's a few things that are conspiring to sink old cocaine bear i mean i'm gonna put this out there and you guys can contest it but this is student feature certified uh, i co-sign that i co-sign Ooh, student feature certified. I mean, yeah. not, the budget's higher than any student. <laughs> it's universal. Yeah. It, it couldn't be more expensive. But the script. And it looks the, like an SNL sketch. And uh, the it editing. Looks, yes. Straight yeah. up like an SNL digital. And the shooting, short. especially of just dialogue scenes and the yeah. pacing. There's like, bad cuts and weird continuity errors that are God, so glaring. God bless <laughs> Elizabeth Banks, but. She yes. no Alfred Hitchcock. Director Elizabeth Banks. <laughs> she's got the right spirit, but... Oh, there's there's this fun spirit for sure. Yeah, it's got the vibe. It's got but, a good vibe. I mean, you, we wouldn't even be talking about continuity errors and editing if the jokes landed. That's better. right. Yeah, that's like, right. Because no one really cares. Adam McKay movies are cut like shit mm-hmm. and have tons of continuity errors. Nobody cares. Yeah. As long as you're funny. laughing. Yeah. Milster, you were covering your face a lot during this. They had Carrie fucking Russell. They gave her nothing to do. They gave her the worst lines of dialogue. I'm your mother, honey. Of course I came for you. It's like, I'm just like, please don't make her say that. It's so bad. Like, don't. Why did Carrie Russell accept this role? Like, she made it good, but but, but it was just, it couldn't be good. It was just so bad. Every single plot line was. Every single Uh, set of characters if you've seen like, the americans uh, it's a mini americans reunion you got carrie russell her real life husband and co-star in the americans matthew Rees, and Margot martindale Margot fucking martindale's i love her this. but she felt miscast here it was I like it felt know. like a drama with her and i was like i know it's supposed to be funny I but i'm not getting any funny vibes if the script is that broken then everybody can feel miscast like, that's the problem. You it's know? like, I wish this wasn't Ray's last film. You know, he brought it, but then to see him disemboweled, Ooh, yeah, it really, hurt yeah, me that that, that was that how, that was the yeah, last it, it was, I didn't image. Like that. It, was a, it was a dark last image. It was kind of dirty. <laughs> I mean, they never knew. But it's yeah. I mean, well, what are you supposed to do? Just cut that? But then, no, but no, then at the end it, of, it such, of such a, a film as this, it says, in loving memory of Ray Leona. Who just got <sighs> disemboweled. Just got disemboweled <laughs> just, by a pair of felt... little coked up bear cubs. <laughs> and, uh. and that was problematic too. It was like, it was like, oh, mama's saving her little cubs, but she brought cocaine home for them to all get addicted. It yeah. was like, Oof. it was just dark to me. It was like, it was, it was, it was dark like side not, the whole yeah. thing. There weren't enough laughs for Oof. me. And then when, yeah, the character's died gruesomely I felt even like more unhappy where I was like man I don't know what I was expecting but maybe not this Uh, level of misery or something I'll tell you what it's like when you go to Hawaii and you go to a luau they have the buried pig that they're gonna serve you and there's a big moment where they dig up the pig People everybody are dancing, crowds around. Everybody crowds around. You see tourists with holding up full size iPads recording <laughs> the fucking dig. And it builds the excitement builds to a fever pitch. And then they dig it up and it's a fucking cooked carcass that's pretty grisly to look at. And everybody just kind of goes, oh, and the iPads come down and they walk away. They eat it later, but there's that expectation and then the reality sets in and they're like, oh, cocaine bear is the same thing. You're like, I want to see cocaine bear rip into some people. And then he does and you're like, oh, 
Well, it's then, unpleasant. And it's all, <laughs> it's like hardly any of it's practical. It's all CG. It's CG blood. Well, that, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves here. It's 2023. That bear is going to be CG no matter who makes this fucking movie. Yeah. I mean, but you could add some the bear in The some... Revenant was CG. What chance does this movie have at a <laughs> yeah. real bear? No, Justin, the Revenant, I think, the I Revenant think you're going to need so... to stand up for this movie today. Because The Revenant, <laughs> the Revenant attack that. was so much more thrilling than any attack in this well, movie. Well, yeah, yeah, that movie was trying to win Oscars. But yeah. I, I will say this. It, while watching it, in the back of my head, I did think, like, what if some fucking lunatic with a lot of money got a bunch of washed up actors, flew them to Russia, and mm. was like, all right, we haven't had a hit in 10 years. Yeah. None of us. We got some real bears. Yeah. We can do whatever the fuck we want because we have money and, and we're, we're in Russia. Russia. <laughs> Let's just fucking do this. We'll yeah. pretend it's Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> yes. That... Even though people could have died worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That could have been something that could be a cult classic. That's whereas true. Like, they, like they, did it with, they did it with Bart the Bear in the Edge, which is one of my guilty pleasures. Like, that's a practical bear. That's a real bear. Chasing doubles, you know, through s scenarios. And, you, and it feels like it. And it feels like the uh. bear's coked up, too, in that movie, because it's stalking them. It's <laughs> relentless. We can't kill the bear, Charles. The original cocaine bear. Yeah, you can just have one shot of a real bear. You don't have to have it attacking people well let's i was so confused just now because i thought you meant the edge aka oh, the car the, where oh, it, oh, it is. is i was oh, like what is. the it, fuck it, it <laughs> oh alec baldwin no this car is very much named after the edge but yeah we should talk about cult status because there's such a thing as when a movie is sweatily reaching and clamoring for cult status or assumes yeah. that cult status is a foregone conclusion. Yeah, the studio thinks this is. And it's weird because with the ad campaign, like they paid so many Instagram meme makers for this. Mm -hmm. it, Instagram is flooded with cocaine bear jokes. Mm -hmm. So is that enough? If, if everything around a movie is culty enough, but the movie at its core kind of sucks. Oh, it just, Can it still be a cult classic? It just feels corporate. It just feels like corporate marketing. But what's how is it going to shake out in the future? Like, oh, I think it, there'll be another one. It's like yeah, Sharknado. They'll keep exactly. It. I think Oof. it could definitely be cult status. There was enough fun moments in it that, that I could see people getting behind. Were there? It. I, I, I didn't yeah, think there, there were. I, what really threw me was the trailer, which showed everything. I thought in my <laughs> mind was just act one right but it was like no it that was, was the climax pretty much yeah i was just like oh man the climax wasn't that great no it was not but i mean I, like we say every time we attempt to watch a comedy the bar is low the bar is so the bar low. is so bar is low. low get it alden aaron reichs in it anyway <laughs> we're like the audience was really feeling it and it's because we're Fucking clamoring starved. for entertainment. Starved. Comedy starved. I wouldn't for say. Mo in movies. There aren't even really any jokes in this movie. There's like funny ish situations, but like there could be jokes in this and there just weren't. Yeah. Like, yeah, the jokes all stem from, you're right, the situation that we're it's in. Like, like, the bear is on cocaine. Holy yeah. fuck. Holy fuck. But I mean, I'll, <laughs> I'll give it this. At least. It had the fucking balls to have children try cocaine. I, I mean, like that's, that. that's I agree. not nothing. I agree. I, you know, I, I, thought, they, I they, thought they were not going to do it, but, yeah. <laughs> but they could have like made it funnier. Like when, right. when they're was, when you put that much like freeze on your gums, your mouth gets numb, and it's like yes. I can't talk or like feel my mouth. There like, would there would be situational weird, I don't know. funny like, setups, but then right when mm -hmm. you expect there to be a punchline or something to solidify the joke. There's a little vacuum in it, and then the scene ends, and you're like, yeah. wait, uh, what? What? Yeah, yeah, there was no reaction to them doing coke. No. Yeah, it would have been funny it's if like, they just started talking about, like, starting a lemonade stand. Yeah, yes. we're going to sell lemonades, and we'll, like, we'll, we'll expand, <laughs> yes, we'll get hilarious. other kids like that we go to this. school with to get lemonade yeah. stands, oh, and we'll all put oh. money and get bigger and there better lemonade go. stands. Yeah, oh, yeah, lemonade stands. There you stands. go. Oh, oh what about pink lemonade? Yeah, I love pink lemonade. Do you love pink lemonade? Let's get pink lemonade. <laughs> oh, shit, pink lemonade with Kool-Aid. Yeah. See, yeah. We need a live punch-up pass. <laughs> see like that is a scene and yeah, but all like, the oh, scenes were like hilarious. that they were yeah. missing and that it's like, thing and it's like whenever you do like whenever there's a mushroom scene sure. or whatever i know mushroom cocaine and mushrooms are a different thing 
But you have to have a reaction once you take the drug. You have yeah. to have a coked out scene. Well, that yeah. th that leads me to like, yeah, for the climax showdown. Mm. In the dark cave. Carrie Russell should have done a fat rail. You know, oh, like yeah. coke Hell mom. Yes. Like mom versus mama bear. And it's like fire with fire. And they like oh, throw her the rifle. So she's, like, so she's like, no, I don't need this. And she like puts the rifle down and she just like picks up like the, the knife or whatever from from uh, the other guy that got stabbed. He maybe kept it and like gives it to her. Lucas where were you in this writing, writer's <laughs> yeah, room? They Just, needed you, Lucas. Yeah. yeah so and then bad. I feel like, yeah, Ray Liotta should have gotten the bag of drugs for his send off and like fallen over the falls. And you just like cut to him floating down river, holding his drugs, sure. like smiling or whatever. It's a movie called Cocaine Bear. And people <laughs> will say, oh, yeah, great. Humorless way to dissect Cocaine Bear, guys. But no, you need to like it's 2023. You need to bring it. Like we've we've seen and been exposed to so much snarky bullshit. Mm -hmm. Cocaine Bear comes out. It's like snakes on a plane. Everybody gets excited. They're like blunt title, and then you got to deliver. You got to deliver on at least a portion of the expectations. You know? Yeah, know. and I think snakes on a plane is the obvious comp, right? Because sure. it had a great title, great trailer that could never... Ever. The movie Chaos. could never no. live up to that trailer. I've never seen that movie, but, but yeah. I mean, it's fine, I guess. But <laughs> the for me, it felt a lot like The Hangover, mm. where the audience is eating it up, and I am i don't really get most of the jokes because they don't feel like jokes, but the because in the movie someone screams, "What is going on?" Right. That's supposed to be funny. <laughs> yeah, like it's why the Hangover is a like, masterpiece compared to this piece. It's I get, but, but it's I mean, a total "What is going on?" movie. It's, it's yeah, the, the, co I, the, yeah. the bear did cocaine. It's funny because everyone's yelling at me. It's yeah. like it's always sunny in Philadelphia, where it's like, well, there it, like instead of one Kramer, there's four Kramers. And they're always yelling. It's like, that doesn't make it funny, though. <laughs> like, it has the cadence of funny. Yes. And I'm happy that the audience is happy because, god damn, let's try to make the cinema a respite from the shit world that we've all created. Right. That's it. The movie has a cadence of a cult classic. Mm -hmm. But it... it it's, it's sniffing around, yeah. It shouldn't be one. Look, I just feel... <sighs> You got to pick like one storyline and stick with it so you can work with what you got to like build tension and release it and like, yeah, like really get people invested. And so when the stakes go up, we really care as opposed to when Isaiah Whitlock dies on top of the gazebo. I'm like, I was unclear that he was am I dead. Supposed to be sad. Am I, am I supposed to be laughing? Is this funny? Like, what, what am I doing here right now? And it, it hurts too when, at least for me, every time they would cut around to a different group, I would sigh because I didn't like anybody. No, I wasn't looking forward to catching up with anybody. And that gazebo scene was like 30 minutes. Oh. <laughs> that was a long gazebo. Woo. The cop's like, no, 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 let's oh. see what happens. You know, let's not shoot the bear dead. Like, okay, oh. dude. All right. Oh. And, and by the way, that whole scene should have been like act one. I was like, how is this the end of the movie? This feels like this should have been act one. I will say this. There's a scene where I woke up, like, I mean, I was awake, but my, cin up. my cinema. Up. My got coked up. My cinema brain coked up. It was the ambulance chase. Yes. Yeah. That yes. scene was well done. Yes. If We're the whole movie was with those paramedics when they lived, that yes. would have been a way better fun time. And Margot Martindale's already been established as not being the best shot. And she's pointing <laughs> out the back of the ambulance with the paramedic just kind of like trying to dodge her gun and the bear chasing them. Great scene. And you got Depeche Mode. Just can't get enough. It depends. Jam. <laughs> it's just playing. Yeah, you got the universal '80s catalog. Just use some some a, more '80s music. Another Every question. Scene. Yeah. Did this feel like the '80s to you? No. 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 What is it that made it completely not feel like the '80s? I don't know. Most most '80s period pieces don't feel like the '80s. They like feel what like is it? Is it the lack of grain? Like yeah. What. Is it? Is it the? Oh. It's aesthetic. It's, it's a, it, aesthetic has a lot to do with it because you can do the wardrobe and hair and have some posters. But it just all in looks the bedroom so basic. But yeah, look threadbare. Once you get out in the sunshine, especially <laughs> yeah. in the wilderness, yeah, 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 it's yeah. like you yeah. forget. Yeah, what time period it is? Yeah. Uh, well, also now fashion is so ambiguous. Like right. people wear whatever the fuck they want to wear. So like that's true. A dude with a mustache and a members only jacket walking by this car right now. Totally move acceptable. the needle for us. Yeah. And yeah. What yeah. I, I thought was strange too is the opening music cue 
is the exact same song that opens Wet Hot American Summer I know. with Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth mm. Banks. I guess that was a nod to it. Mm. Very odd. Yeah. I got to rewatch Wet Hot American Summer. Bill, I love did that. you have something to add? It's the best. I forgot it. <laughs> Let's go to them. <laughs> Bear bones. <laughs> Milster, you are first to bone. First to bone. Let me tell you what. I'll give you this on Coke. <laughs> Basically, I did think there was a really fun vibe to this uh, show, this movie, what uh-huh, it's called, uh-huh. a film. Yeah. But at the very same time, I got to squash. Well, I have to get my bones and then I'm going to squash it because. Brother Josh squash? I'm going to do a Brother Josh squash on this film. And I'll tell you why. Because the dialect work in this was e gre e e e just They said it was set in Georgia. They had people from Tennessee. This oh. it, it drove me nuts. There was not a single Southern person in this. The accents were so bad. It made me cringe. So I'm going to give it two bones with a Brother Josh squash down to one. I'm Brother Josh and you've been squashed. There it is. That's our first Brother Josh squash. So squash is a half bone down. No, no. Actually, a squash is a full bone down, but this is good because... <laughs> well, it's got, I'm, you should I'm lay, sorry. lay it all out Okay, fine. Us. I will. All right. So the, the Brother Ben bump is a half bone up. The yeah. Brother Ben slump is a half bone down. And the Brother Josh squash is a full bone squash. Full bone. Hey, listen, you squash however the fuck you want to squash, all right? <laughs> yeah, this is it. America. <laughs> he did it. All right. Brother Bishki, you were so excited to see this. Oh, I said, I said, I said, I'm dreading this earlier today. <laughs> uh, because I saw I saw Brother Nate's low rating, Uh-oh. and Nate and I don't always agree on what we like. But if Nate hates something, I'm gonna hate that movie Uh-oh. almost 95 percent of the time. What are you doing, snooping around on ratings? No, for? Letterboxd is a little dangerous. I need yeah. to I need to be careful because I could have came in a little more pure for this one. But I don't I don't have much to say. Yeah. I, I, Ray Liotta, uh, Half Bone, the Roger E. Memorial Half Bone. I hated, hated, hated this movie. There you go. <laughs> Rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Brother LT. I uh, was pretty, yeah, like zoned out. Yeah, you uh, were you for, were stone for, silent for most of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of crestfallen. And I was doing not so much a live rewrite, but like I was thinking, man, if I made my own cocaine bear movie... <laughs> Be a grizzly bear. I know that. I don't think I'd deal with a black bear. I this know isn't a live rewrite? No, 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 because right. this is a totally different thing. Right. But it's got like one of those meta modern twists, like the the Nicolas Cage, the unbearable weight of massive talent, except mm-hmm. my version. It's the Bacon family, Kevin Bacon, <laughs> so- Sozy Bacon, and Kira Cedric. <laughs> and he's like, we got to get out of town for a while. Let's go to Yosemite. And like they're, they're at Yosemite, like at Airbnb, and there's like neighbors down the lake that like having a party or something and there's like drugs and yeah, like grizzly bear gets hold of drugs. And then like you, you have the whole movie kind of take place in real time where you build this like momentum where it's like, they got to get help. They got to like, you know, save the day. And this is the bacon family. This is the bacon family. It's bacon (laughs) versus bear. So this Mm -hmm. is, this is a true thriller. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This would be more like, yeah, the edge you where everyone's playing it straight and it's like, it's drama, but it's just absurd and crazy and even surreal. Is it erotic? Maybe, Ooh. yeah. You have like a waterfall rain scene where like, yeah, Kevin Bacon's got his shirt off and Kyra Cedric's like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> tending to his wounds. Like, that, that looks bad. Like, we got to get you help soon. Let me kiss it first. Yeah. And and Sozy Bacon's like, guys, we got to we gotta like burn our clothes that have that's blood on it. The bear will like smell it. It's stalking us. Um, but for this movie, this, ti- this title, I'll give it one bone. One hey, whole bone? Shit, all right. That's more than Bishki gave it. See, Hollywood, you can come up with cocaine bear, but you can't come up with cocaine bacon, <laughs> which is why you need Brother Lucas. Oh, my God. All right. Brother Justin, love and light. <sighs> yes. Okay, listen, man. I'm like, I, I come across as a man of the people, okay? Yeah, so yeah. I want to, when people are in the theater and they're having a good time, yeah. I want to be one of those people. Oh, of course, Because yeah. I'm the people's champion, all right? Totally, I'm not totally. a fucking snob. I don't like fucking sad shit. I like fun shit. And this was supposed to be fun shit, and sometimes it wasn't fun. But it had the cadence of fun, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah, were yeah. having a good time. Just because the fucking film snobs in this fucking car didn't like it right. doesn't mean that it shouldn't make a bunch of money. Right. I fucking wanted to make a bunch of money, so we make more fucking movies 
like this yeah. because I think we should encourage movies like this, Woo! even if this was a misfire. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I'm yeah. giving it two bones because I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm going to take those bones. I'm going to fucking crush them and I'm going to snort them and everyone can kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> That's yeah. Cocaine Bear. Yeah. Lodge yeah. Master. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Utah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Give me two. Utah. Give me two. That's great. I wish I could give it two bones, <laughs> but I was so upset at this movie. I'm just like, come on, guys. It's like a layup. It's a layup. Oh it my god, that was one of the analogies I thought of. It's like a layup. Like, watch me do this layup, and they trip over the cooler. All the ice spills <laughs> out of the cooler, and then the rest of the basketball team slips on the ice, like twisting their ankles or like spraining their ankles <laughs> or die. They just all they hit the floor and die. Gutted. I mean, that's basically it. I will give it the Roger Ebert Memorial half bone for that fucking ambulance chase. What about the cocaine kids? <sighs> No, because there's no, re- there's no, there's no reaction. There's no, no joke reaction. there. The ah. coke goonies, right. the cocoonies. I'm giving it, <laughs> I'm giving it a half bone. Cocoonies get nothing. I hated, hated, hated this movie. Yeah, that girl was in the turning, which I also, <laughs> yes. which I also. Oh, my favorite memory of the screen is Lodge Master leans over to me. He's like, do you remember who that is? And I'm like, no. He's like, the turny. <laughs> With she Finn. was bad in this, and her accent was terrible. And she was barely in it because she gets kidnapped by glad. the bear. Oh, like, that, was, that was some funny shit, like uh, aliens, like with you know Burke. She was barely in it. <laughs> All right, let's do the uh, Rotten Tomatoes game. Oh yeah, let us guess the Rotten Tomatoes. It's time I settle the score. Folks, it's time to settle the Rotten Tomatoes score. Oh, Let's shit. cut that tomato open. Yeah. Chop, chop. So we'll do critics. Okay. What do we think the critics gave 60%. it? 60%. 50. Ooh. I'm going to say 58. Yeah. Let's thread the needle and say like 50, yeah, mid 50s, late 50s. Or do we have to come to a consensus? Yeah. It's, it's not an exact oh, science. Okay. We're in the, we're all in the same, all right. the same zip code. Let's fight about it. The <laughs> critics were giving a little more love and light than you thought. They were taking in about 70%. Wow. Oh, what? oh, okay. All right. Now the people, now the people, our yuck, yuck audience, our mm-hmm. yuck, yuck audience. Um, no, it's going to be high. It's mm-hmm. going to be mm-hmm. like, oh. get higher, baby. 87, 88. I was thinking 88, 87. Uh, I'm still at 50. Okay, Millie says 50. Justin, what do you think? I'm going to say 89. Oh, shit. It's going to be high. What is it, Bishki? Well, they're kind of in between. 75. Woo! Right. Wow. 75%. Generally favorable reviews. <sighs> Generally favorable usually means I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> We're so cool. But yeah, like Justin said, it's like... We want more cocaine bear spirit out there in the universe. So mm. it's like if this, point. if this content interests you. But don't get so hung up on the cocaine that it becomes such an integral plot point. That's all we're talking about and doing. Cause it's there is fun a fun vibe. It, ish. So yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, hey, 2023 is starting off pretty fucking well as far as I'm concerned. We yeah. got Megan, we got Cocaine Bear. Yeah. Yeah. Bones mm-hmm. aside for both of those films, we're on the right track. We're yes. giving the people what they want. This so. is a, a course correction. So if you've seen Cocaine Bear and you think it is the cult classic masterpiece that it is purported to be, Sound off on Instagram. Let us know, folks. Hit us up in those comments on SoundCloud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Figure out how to comment on SoundCloud. You are, you are a <laughs> log into SoundCloud. Hear us roar. Well, Brother Justin and Lodge Mistress Millie, thank you for taking this hike with us. Absolutely. Hey, anytime, yeah. man. Hey, like, we should hang out more. Yeah, <laughs> we, should, we should get another eight ball, yeah. yeah. I, got, I got like 20 <laughs> cocaine-related songs I could have you play after this, but oh. I won't say any specific one. You, you can come up with your own. Sounds hey, you good. guys, I live in Burbank. You guys want to come hang out? Yeah, yeah. let's just go let's walk. Do it. Yeah, All right. stay up. Let's walk walk Fuck, along yeah. the freeway. Let's go, for, let's go for a walk. <laughs> Love and light, y'all. Love and light. Love and light. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Matthew, I am still your Lodge father. Greetings, Lodgekins. Matt's dad here. Saw a cocaine bear on Friday at 440. A sold out crowd. This is definitely a movie young Matt would have snuck into. The R rating would not have stopped him. Then his early home movies would have featured more amputations and less chit chat. Sounds heard coming from the audience included no, run, you, yuck, and laughter. 
Esquire magazine did an article on the real cocaine bear years ago. The coke killed the bear almost right away. Turns out it was then stuffed and had many different owners. Would I recommend this movie to my sister? No, but that's her. Did I like it? Yes, but that's just me. Three bones for cocaine bear, but is not for everybody. And finally, a happy birthday to my favorite daughter-in-law, Millie. Lodge father I am. Hug a senior, love and light. Oh, shit. Pink Lemonade with Kool-Aid. Yeah.